Welcome back to Let's Play Hardcore Grim Dawn, Questy Sparks, Lightning Totems and whatnot. Um, and as we load in, I realize we've got something pretty important to do. So let's get on that. Looking for a new you? Can't have this looking like it does. Let's see what else we can rig up here. Um, I think what we were rocking around. Ooh. Uh, mm. I don't know. That looks a little bit goofy right there. A little bit goofy. I think we do have... That might look less goofy. It does, but there's also something else I'm thinking of. Mm. I mean, that actually looks quite good, but... More lightning-y. Frosty. Yeah, there we go. I think that's what we had before, actually. I like it. Okay. So that's the important stuff out of the way. <clears throat> and it's going to be time to get on with things. We are actually uh, up here. We've gotten our way all the way up, um, kind of through the Undercity. <clears throat> and we are... I believe we're through the Undercity, aren't we? Well, I don't know. Maybe we are, maybe we aren't. I'm going to find that out. But first... It's time to press F because my ritualist that I was working my way through the game with um, level 77 trying to get my way up to uh, up to 100 hardcore ultimate difficulty. Well, that's what it looks like when they die in hardcore. Just a ghost now. Just a ghost. All kinds of fancy ass gear. Powerful character ended up just eating shit to some crumbled golem in the uh, in the bandit area, sort of uh, just outside of Act One, or just yeah, just outside of Act One. Which really, really a bummer because honestly, everything else leading up to that, um, this character had just proven extremely efficient. Um, I was running it with a Blight Fiend and a, and a Briar Thorn with a couple other incidentals. I think I showed it off a little while ago. Really great hardcore character. I had high hopes for this one. Made it to level 77. I was expecting to maybe get a little closer to 100, but it didn't happen. Fortunately, I also had... Uh, let me poke around here, see if I can find it. I got lots of characters in here. Um, yes, I had this character. Uh, level 47 at the time of uh, the demise of my other character, Pyromancer. So now uh, here's my new hope. My new hope for getting to level 100. I'm just in a lead over here. But that's not important. What's important is how we do with Questy Sparks. Just level 30 and a lot of room to go. But let's get geared up. And uh, figure out exactly where we were when we left off. Try to remember what my rotation is. Very, very simple by the look of things. Um, just trying to get as many totems dropped as we can. All right, so the most advanced uh, waypoint we have is Broken Hills, um, which means that we either have or haven't explored a bit of this. Take a look. Nope, we haven't. All right, so uh, let's get going. Now, we would have talked to the guy right outside the entrance here um, and gotten a quest to kill his daughter, who... It's not as bad as it sounds. She's a crazy, horrible harpy creature um, that was cursed here when the uh, Arcovians fell. Uh, but we do have this little uh, little area up here. It's not actually a secret because, as you can see, it's on the map. Um, but it is a little off to the side. So let's go ahead and uh, get rolling. Start doing work. Now, as you can see, this area is off to the side, but it is not even a special area, right? Like, it has no special uh, characteristics or modifiers. Um, that said, lots of skellies, so let's reap the XP. And there it is. Level 31. That's a good start to the session, I would say. All right, and uh, once again, this character just bouncing between physique and spirit, from what I remember. So we're going to continue to do that. And uh, we'll get our first look at what we were working on in here. So it looks like we've been advancing here. We're up to wasting now. Uh, that is probably something that we'll want to invest in. But we also want to invest in this. Uh, what were we doing in Shaman? Uh, Shaman 
definitely we could improve on this, couldn't we? We could also improve on this. But there's all kinds of stuff we want to be working on here. Um, Stormcaller Pact is obviously the direction we're eventually going to get to. Uh, that's a ways off, and I think there's probably some stuff we should develop in the meantime, including a little bit of wasting and a couple ranks of that. Just because you see there, we're starting to debuff Ellie. Uh, that's going to make a big difference going forward. Okay, good. Uh, let's double check. We do have a point available. Um, okay, memory games here. What on earth was I doing? I know that I am building towards this. I need uh, five ascendant and five uh, blue. I have zero blue and three ascendant. Okay, so I think what I'd left off last time was trying to figure out how I could find a way to unlock a blue without wasting a point. So let's see here. All right. I think I know what I want to do. I think I'm going to grab these ranks in Viper. Um, this is a way that we are going to be, we can unlock it right now and it will unlock three blue for us. So it'll put us halfway up the, uh, the March, you know, just over halfway towards this. Uh, so we are going to need a little bit more, but one of the reasons that I like this, okay, you know, stats, whatever, that's good. This is nice. Energy absorption. Uh, that could be good. That's fine. This is nice. 20% reduced targets elemental resistance for three seconds. Presumably, that means when we attack a target for the first time, we get three seconds of reduced elemental resistance, which will stack with our curse um, and just give our lightning more of a chance to fuck people in an uncomfortable location. Like the backseat of a Volkswagen Beetle. All right. So there we go, we are leveled and ready to go, and we've spent our devotion point that we were hanging on to for no apparent reason. So let us finish exploring this area. Now there is something about this area that I am probably not going to bother exploring, and that is the associated dungeon that goes with this area. Call me a pussy if you want, but it is a dungeon that has killed stronger characters than this on occasion. So one of the things that we have to do as a hardcore character, even if you think you're going to be okay, only go in somewhere when you really think you're going to be okay. And in this case, I would not qualify myself as really going to be okay in that dungeon. So for now, we're done with this little side area. But as you can see here, we have an ancient ruins entrance there that we could eventually get into. Um, might come back for that. There's definitely loot to be had. There's a skull boss down there. There is also one of those totems. You remember the one we uh, we took on? I believe it was last episode or maybe the episode before uh, where it spawned all those tentacle demons. Picture that yet again. It's, it's sketchy. I don't love doing it. Um, so I think I'm going to leave that for now. Let's try to coax this character through a little bit of the game before I get him unceremoniously slaughtered. Although, getting this character unceremoniously slaughtered might not be the worst idea because I actually do have, thanks to my level 77 character, God rest your soul, um, I actually do have uh, champion's merits now. So I can start in elite and ultimate. Um, so I might actually do my next hardcore start in elite. I don't know if I would jump straight into another, um, another playthrough if I get this guy killed. Um, just because, you know, there's tons of games out there to play and I might do something else. I've actually been looking at, I, I bought quite a while ago a game called Star Valor, uh, another, another little game developed by an indie, uh, indie studio consisting of a dude. Um, and I bought it when it was in early access years ago, uh, and had a lot of fun with it. Um, really cool little game, but it wasn't feature complete. Um, and so it just came out in 1.0, so it's something I gotta look at because it's really, really cool. Sort of a top-down, like if you remember like Star Control, uh, Space Pirates versus Zombies. Got a bit of that feel, but a pretty deep, uh, character development as well. Um, you know, character development, ship customization, you can get other ships. Anyway, enough chatting about that, but that is something that I might actually get into here on the channel at some point possibly after this guy eats shit because i do have the two playthroughs going on right now that kind of takes up all my time 
that said, this is a really fun build so far that I think is probably going to be uh, probably going to be with me for a while. Uh, this here is something that I haven't started doing yet. Um, it is something. This is the path of Dreeg. You do probably want to do that with every difficulty level, but I normally just kind of skip over it. It would yield, I believe, one extra um, skill point, uh, sort of per level uh, or uh, per playthrough, right? Per difficulty level. So it is something that you should do, but it, you know, those skill points aren't really going to become important for quite a while yet. So I'm just going to kind of keep advancing here. Now, I believe up this way possibly is where we're going to find that guy's daughter, but that also might be a little bit farther over. This character seems kind of slow compared to my pyromancer. Uh, yeah, okay, so this route here is going to um, sort of a more difficult side dungeon area. So I'm going to press ahead because the boss of that area... It is just a reaper of characters. Like he's kind of um, kind of a bit of a pyromancer and he sits back and throws essentially Blackwater cocktails at you. He's tough to kill. He's got a lot of adds and his fire damage is intense. So even though I'm maxed out on fire resist, I just don't necessarily know that I would survive that encounter. So I might leave it off for a little while um, and just try to build up a little bit more health because that's really what it is, right? Like, he hits you a couple of times, you're in potion cooldown, and you'll just get tagged and burned to death as you're trying to avoid all of his stupid ads and stuff like that. Um, so I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to avoid that. Alright, there we go. Let's link this guy up with a little bit of uh, crossfire from our totems. Down he goes. Maven's Hood. Very nice. One thing I did do on my little, uh, you know, my level 77 run there is I got a lot of items. Once you hit ultimate difficulty um, in hardcore, the drop rate is nuts. Um, drop rate of legendary items, I should say. Like, I was getting some really good stuff. Um, and I was immediately able to, like, when I switched back over, I remembered that, ah, here we go. This is the guy's daughter here. Uh, which we want to kill, courtesy of his request. Yeah. All right, let's make sure this guy's dotted up appropriately. Lots of hit points here. Kind of continue to deke around. We're not really taking any damage, so we're fine. There we go. So that's a quest complete. We can cash in with him. Um. Oh, we're actually missing one of the one of the kills in the undercity there. That's interesting. I think normally you just run into all those, but I must have been skipping territory. I might have to go back and do that. We'll see. I mean, I don't really. I mean, you can just kind of blow through here. I don't need to do these quests at this difficulty level. But what I do want to do is I want to do this. So let's, uh, yeah, you guys can join in. All right. Lightning, Hawks, oh, it's all coming together so nicely. Let's drop another uh, Wendigo totem here. Very nice. This character, starting to feel pretty good. Flow pretty quick. Okay, we could duck back to the uh, portal there, but instead I think we'll just kind of push ahead, get to the next one, and then go back and cash in the kill on that guy's daughter. The crazy harpy that we just killed there. Alright, there we go. Yeah, group clear is coming along quite nicely on this character. As you can see, we're not, we're not going to un unload uh, or uncover all the map there. We're just going to keep pushing ahead. I don't want to spend too much time at veteran difficulty. I want to get over into elite very quickly here. So we're going to press forward. Uh, these guys can be dangerous. I got to watch myself here. Uh, those charge attacks from elites um, can be a little bit risky. Pop a heal. Taking some damage over time. There we go. Standing in the bad here. It's not a good tactic, um, but let's go ahead and spend that devotion point. 
Uh, start working our way up snake. Ow, motherfucker. Okay. That was pretty uncalled for. Pretty uncalled for. I like that it, you know, I like that you get all the damage on screen effects and everything like that, just so that, um, you know, you're not in there kind of ignorant to the fact that you're getting eaten in the real world. All right. Watch your back. Uh, this is Elsa. I don't know if you remember back at uh, Devil's Crossing, one of the guys in the main office there was looking for her. Um, yeah, so we can tell her there's a mutual friend. It's uh, Mornay. Um, yeah, so they so they were taking her back to entertain the gang, and she uh, she slipped away, didn't return to him. Yeah, yeah, so there's a little bit of awkwardness between them. So she's out uh, adventuring on her own, doesn't want to go back. Um, yada, yada, we invite her back. She's not going to come. Uh, just tells us about the area. Um, so there's a little encounter, you know, a little bit of backstory. Obviously, Mornay uh, was an adventurer. <laughs> he used to be an adventurer like ourselves. Um, and they got split up at that bandit camp. She escaped. No desire to go back. So um, we're just, you know, we'll go back and, and potentially tell him. I can't I can't remember what we tell him. I think we just tell him we didn't know about here. Just to keep it simple. Have to watch our health there. We are taking some hits. I can't remember where we were sitting here. We're, yeah, we're pretty low armor. That's probably why we're taking a fair amount of damage from those gunshots. This area here is kind of cool, but it really, this is one of the parts of the game where it's very transitional, you know? You're just kind of traveling through this zone to get to the next one. There's not really much in the way of quests or anything like that out here. They do have a couple of zones that kind of feel a bit filler, and this is certainly one of them. So we're going to largely skip it, because there's really no reason to... Really no reason to fuck around. Kind of keep pushing forward, keep leaving damage behind to harvest that sweet, sweet XP. Yeah, I don't really, again, I don't really want to stand toe to toe with that elite there, just eating damage. <laughs> That's a turret farm right there. Very nice, very nice. You know, when I'm looking at my Pyromancer and I think I'm like, whatever, level 53, something like that, you know, and I'm well over a thousand percent added damage to fire. Ton of burn. I can't wait to see this build once I start getting up into those numbers. Because right now we're, we're sitting here at, uh, you know, our lightning damage is... Scrolling, scrolling. Yeah, we've got 224 electrocution and 378. So, you know, once we're starting to get up into those numbers, I think those uh, stacks of totems are just going to devastate. Um, but again, uh, this is another little transitional area. We could clear it. There's quite a bit of XP on the ground in here, but I think we're just going to keep going ahead. Uh, shortest route. This is actually a map that you will sum to out. Oh, we're going to go for that elite. All that sweet, sweet XP that he's packing around. I want it. There we go. Thank you. Uh, this is an area here where sometimes you can end up doing a little bit of farming just because of the um, the guy at the end. Uh, the boss there, he drops the, um, what are they called, troll crushers which you're going to need for a lot of crafting recipes. I mean, good weapon on its own, right? There's a lot of melee builds that really can just benefit from having a troll crusher in the in the inventory, but it's also very useful for crafting a thing called the Mistborn Talisman. No relation to the books. Um, and that is used in a number of crafting recipes that you're going to want to do. Basically, crafting these is a big deal in the later game because usually you have to craft a bunch of lower level relics and then combine them into a higher level relic as well as add in a couple of other little items as well. So they're they're pretty intensive for crafting and that's where you're going to need this guy's drop. 
Now, you do tend to get a ton of them as you play, so if you just keep them in your inventory, you're off to a good start. We do have a we do have a spawn here of this thing, which we're not always going to get, but we are going to take advantage of it. Throw down our uh, totems. Okay, I want to jump out of there. I don't want to be entirely tied down to that. Let's make sure they're poxed. Make sure we have our totems dropping. Okay, don't like it. Kind of keeping me, uh, they're pushing me off to the side there and I was in cooldown on my leap ability. A little bit of danger zone here. A little bit of danger. Now we still do have that damage absorption that we can pop if we need to. These things just have a lot of hit points and because they're also freezing me down, they do cold damage. Um, you know, that can cause a little bit of trouble while you're trying to step around them. Items here. Yeah, so here's a troll bone crusher. These guys here, um, you know, that item, throw it, throw it in the inventory, throw it in the item assistant, you'll need it later. And then, speaking of trolls with bone crushers, this fucking guy. I don't want to avoid getting hit by him because he's actually kind of a bit of a shit kicker. He does do, uh, he does do that, uh, ground, or, um, oh, what the fuck's it called? Soldier ability. That, right there. But he's no match for my shocking totems. Yeah, see, there you go. I think you pretty much always get a bone crusher drop off of him, so he's a great spot to farm it. And a much safer spot than farming it out in the eastern uh, marshes, whatever the hell it's called. Uh, the, there's another boss very similar to that, but much more dangerous in an in a area off by uh, Burrich Village. Which we will take a look at, but not right now. And that's also related to uh, what I was talking about earlier, that path of Dreeg. Um, oh, it's actually not. Never mind. I think you start that in a different spot. Another kind of hidden area off of the early part of the game. Which we might check out. Um, you know, like I say, it's worth, right? It's also a good way to get killed because some of the some of the little um, sort of in-sequence bosses in the path of Dreeg can sometimes surprise you, just kind of jump you and kill you, which we don't want to have happen. Okay, there we go, level 32. Progress is being made. Boy, I haven't learned that. Okay, um, so let's just bounce back to spirit for our magic damage, and then um, figure out how my how my buttons work again. Uh, you know, I'm really not relying on this for damage right now. I'm tempted to just go here and just buff up that Ellie resist um, curse that we have because that's going to make me do more damage with those totems and the totems are the star of the show on this build right now. See, we are continuing to plague people, but honestly, they usually just don't live long enough to really suffer much from our plague because they just get zapped to death by lightning. Oh, another bone crusher. I mean, I've probably got enough in inventory. I'm just telling you chaps. Keep those. Uh, okay, so waypoint acquired. We are going to take a quick deke off this way. Now, there's a reason for that. If we go on ahead, well, I'll show you. I may as well, right? It's a playthrough. What am I doing? So if we go on ahead, we're going to find this little spot right here. And this is a hard stop. Basically, if we try going on down this road, as you can see, it is blocked by uh, ethereal damage, uh, ethereal corruption. If we try going down there, we are fucking dead, and that doesn't really matter what our ethereal protection is. But, look who it is. It's Olgrim. This is the guy that we found out in the camp in the swamps. Then he made us some soup, and now here he is. I haven't been entirely honest with you. I'm not a chef, not by profession anyway, although maybe that would have been... Alright, I'm not going to listen to it all, but he's an assassin, he works for the Empire, um, and he calls us Taken, a little bit of our backstory, great stuff, yada yada yada, how do you own all this, first play, how do you know all this, I'm just going to ask him how I can help. Once again, deep ass lore for an ARPG. But really what he wants me to do is find a way to get these refugees through to Homestead, which is our next hub. 
This guy here is like, hey, I tried to take on the caves you're about to go into, me and my sister. I made it out. My sister didn't. See if you can find her. Spoiler alert. The caves are dangerous. But we're heading in there ourselves. All right, so I'm going to try to plow through here, and then we'll probably call the episode, and we'll pick it up after that, pushing on towards Homestead. Um, this is kind of a pretty straightforward A to B area uh, once again um, until we get out the other side. So let's make tracks. Oh, yes. Did I mention giant horrifying spiders? And uh, troglodytes. Now, these guys down here drop some really good stuff. Um, it's all... Okay. Okay. I'm not going to be able to ignore that, am I? That's pretty on the nose for my build, isn't it? Gives us additional wasting, additional bloody pox. Gives us a lightning bolt when we get hit, which is going to scale with our damage. And it gives us lightning damage and electrocution with increased duration. That is an immediate upgrade. Um, an upgrade so immediate, as a matter of fact, that I'm just going to go straight back to town and I'm going to equip it. Because that is good shit right there. Alright, so we've got to make ourselves some amber. Did I just get stuck on there? Come on. We've got to make ourselves some amber, I think, because I don't know if I have any in inventory. I'll check first here. Uh, let's see... Doesn't look like it. Okay, that's no problem. All right, so we'll slap that up there. Dump that back in the item assistant. We may as well dump this in the item. Okay. Let's dump this shit. Um, that's going to be sold. And let's stow the rest of this. Celestial Lotus. Very nice. Uh, okay, and we will sell the rest of this. First, though, we need amber. Should be right up here. Okay, so that. Pop that on our main weapon. We're going to have to redo that illusion again. We've always been changing weapons fairly routinely here. Okay, so let's uh, tap that up. Because, yeah, that looks awful. Can't be caught wandering around with something like that going on. This is like another pretty good option. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Shake things up. Because I, I, I'm not really like... The sword doesn't really match, you know. I'm, I'm all about the totems and, and just spell casting. So, okay. And let's get back to it. Um, we can try out our newfound skills. That's actually... It's really good, though. I mean, that is really good. It gives us the electrical damage and also buffs these. We get immediate two ranks on both of those. Great find. Like I say, these guys have good drops. Really good drops. Not for every build, obviously, but pretty ideal for some stuff like this. Damage is already getting pretty good, this character. Uh, this character owns things. Now, down here somewhere, we do have ourselves a skull boss. And in that skull boss room is where we're going to find... Spoiler alert again... That dude's sister. Um, and I guess by way of spoiler alert, I mean she's not friends with the boss. Let's clear the bad. Nice. I'm assuming the boss room is farther forward, but these areas are a little bit uh, non-linear, so sometimes you do have to uh, take alternate routes a bit. Sure is nice being able to kill those worm clusters with ranged attacks. They create a great deal of badness when you kill them. I mean, look at that puddle. Filthy. Filthy creatures. Okay. Get off me. Horrible bugs. Nobody has time for you. Um, let's see. Let's take a look here, just in case. No. 
There's going to be sort of a little, there's a little room. It's very similar to that. Okay, this is the exit, so we know we've gone too far. Need to backtrack and find this fucking boss now. Where are you hiding? Where are you hiding? Okay, well we got ourselves an elite. That's that's good. Let's see what he drops for us. Oh. Uh nothing particularly exciting. I mean these are good items. Uh you don't already have a fuck ton of better ones, which I do. Um, so no need to pursue that. Okay, uncomfortable number of spiders, let's be honest. Feeling very Indiana Jones about this. Why does it always have to be spiders? Well, I think for him it was snakes, to be fair. Oh, that is I just don't want to go get that right away uh, we'll take a look here okay come on how long there we go man this is a lot of backtracking I, I, I don't necessarily appreciate this I obviously made a, a man. Look at how fragile this character is sometimes. I really need to improve a little bit in that regard because eventually somebody's going to catch me with something I'm just not going to have the reaction. I'll be doing something else and I'm going to get owned. So I, I'm going to have to improve that survivability at some point. Um, all right, poking around, poking around. Man, I love how long those totems actually persist and just keep working over the opponent. How much dynamite do we have? Um, six sticks. Yeah, that's going to be worth opening this. Couple items. All right. Honestly, where is this boss? He okay, I can get there. I was going to say if I couldn't get there, if there wasn't a back route. Okay. I I ha I pretty much have to check here because if I wander off the other direction and he was here, I will be very sad. Oh uh, no, this is, that's not the right shape of room, but I mean again, maybe here, no. Oh level Y. Why are you like this? Why couldn't you have just like put him like right here? That would have been convenient. He does move around, right? Like he's he's not always in the same spot, so. That's why I'm struggling a little bit. Bad in my tiny shriveled brain. You guys enjoy spending time back there with totems. There he is. All right. Now he's got a little bit of uh, frost going on, but also some ads that can potentially be concerning for us. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to sort of circle around him and uh, bring him down. All right. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll pick that up as soon as we don't have to stand in acid that chews our feet off to do it. Uh, now, we also have, uh, right here. Yeah, okay, spoilers paid off. She didn't fucking make it. She's dead. Okay, um, and then we'll start this. I forgot to lay down pre-totems, but, you know, we're fine. Oh, man, the pox does work. I know it's something that I've probably crowed on about before, but one of the great things about the pox is it keeps doing work even after... 
the enemy dies, like their body can also spread it, which, you know, is just excellent times. Okay, a little bit more vitality resistance. How are we doing in that regard? 42, that's not too bad. I mean, I mean, it's not good, but it's, you know, we're obviously pretty early on in the game here. Level 32. Okay, now it's time to re-backtrack, to back backtrack all the way up here and get out of this place. Not quite perfectly on time. We're sitting around 35 minutes, so this is going to touch long, but not too long. And we do have a waypoint, I believe, right outside the door here. If I remember correctly. Yeah, there we go. I'll nuke these guys. And then we will call it a session here. So thank you very much for watching, and I hope I see you in the next one.